Hey, what's up everybody? In today's quick tip video, I'm gonna show you how to get LUTs working inside of Redshift. Let's jump in. Hey, what's up everybody? Chad here from Grayscale Gorilla. I did a couple streams a while back where I showed Gorilla Grade LUTs, our LUTs that uh, we sell on our site, working inside of the Redshift render view. And, it's, and some people wanted to know exactly how I was doing that. So I thought I'd make a quick tip video showing you exactly how to get our LUTs working inside of Redshift. Uh, real quick, just to, for those of you that don't know what a LUT is, it stands for lookup table. And there's lots of different LUTs. Mainly they're used to emulate film stocks, but a lot of them are also used to do specific color grade looks. That's what the Gorilla Grade LUTs are. They're specifically made for doing really interesting cinematic looks on your renders. So um, typically you would do this in the comp, you do this in Photoshop, After Effects, New Fusion, whatever, but in Redshift, you actually can do it live in your Redshift render view. So let's jump in and see how that's done. All right, so here we are in cinema. I've got a si pretty simple scene that I set up here. This is from a, uh, a render I made when we were promoting our Pro Metals HDRI packs. And we've got some nice HDRI lighting. We've got our scene set up, it's looking good. Uh, we need to apply some color grades, maybe to experiment with the lighting a little bit. All right, so how are we going to do that? Well, I'm not. You can notice that I'm not using the uh, Redshift IPR. I would prefer that you. I, I would say to people, you should use the Redshift Render View. So with the Redshift Render View docked over here, you can see I've got this little little cog wheel, this little settings tab. I'm going to go ahead and click that and it's going to open up three different tabs, display, pixel, and snapshots. So the only tab that we're going to worry about right now is display and specifically the color management area. You can see I'm in sRGB mode right now. Well, we want to change this to LUT display mode and it's automatically going to load a LUT that I had in there earlier. But in order for us to display the Gorilla Grade LUTs correctly, we're going to need to change this gamma to 2.2 because the Gorilla Grade LUTs assume that you're already working in a 2.2 gamma. All right, with that selected, you can see I've got a nice black and white. This is one of my favorite LUTs. This is a photography class, I believe it's called. And from there, we can go ahead and choose a different one. In fact, let's just back up out here and go into the Gorilla Grade LUTs. And let's choose maybe every day, the cube, the cube flavor. And let's go ahead and load that one up. And once we have that loaded, that first one in our list loaded, you can see down here where it says LUT file, it's going to drop down every single every single LUT that it finds in that folder. It's going to populate it down here for you, which is really nice. So it allows me to just simply come in here and start arrowing on my keyboard down through all the different looks. Actually, this one looks pretty good. So here it is without it. And you can see they give us a nice little strength slider, which we can adjust how much of that look we're going to put into it. So it's it's pretty it's a pretty warm looking shot. So if I add this one, which actually is called, I believe it's called like cool beans or something. But if we bring that LUT all the way up, it brings a lot more cool uh, tones to the mids. And it keeps maintains some of the warm tones in the highlights, which I, I really I like that. So if we wanted to, let's say, render this out, and if we render this out right now, and I'm just going to send this, send this to the picture viewer, you can see that it doesn't actually apply the LUT on output. This is only applying it in the display, in the render view, which I actually like because I might want to change my mind when I jump into the comp. I might want to change a completely different look, try something completely different. So I like the fact that it's just happening in the display because that means that I can just fool around in here and change it up when I'm done. So why do I like to work this way? Well, sometimes when you're working on lighting and you want to try something a little bit different and you're not really sure how it's going to react with the color. So it's nice to have that LUT. If you know that you might use it uh, in the comp, have it loaded in here to see how it's going to react. In our case, let's try like a negative 60. I'm just rotating our HDR right now. So this one looks pretty cool, but it's not quite where I want. I'm going to actually swing the front of it around to get more of these highlights on the front. And I like that. That is actually looking pretty good. Okay, so now if I wanted to change that out again, I'm going to go back out to my uh, black and white and go back to where we started, which I believe was with a photography class. And if when you're ready to maybe not work with the LUTs anymore, uh, one mistake that I found that myself making is I would decide, okay, I'm I'm gonna I'm not gonna go use this display mode LUT anymore. I'm gonna use sRGB. Well, when you do that, remember to put your your gamma back up to 1.0 because sRGB already is gonna apply that gamma. So you want to bring that back to 1.0. So again. 2.2 and then go to LUT and then load your LUT and change the strength if you want. So it's pretty simple. So I hope this quick tip tutorial was uh, 
good and hope you got something out of it and I will see you in the next one.